Yo ho ho. Yo ho ho. Well, you can see what the first chart is. I'll try and explain it, or at least tell you what it is. Two lines, red and blue. The blue one starts in about the year 2000, but there was an equivalent one that went on before that. But it was just handy that I could show you that the blue one starts and follows the red one just about exactly. Because otherwise it would have been just the blue one and the red one on top of each other all the time. So the blue one follows the red one, or the red one follows the blue one. Except for strange sticky up bits that the blue one does every now and then. But basically it does exactly what the red one does. So, the red one is the Fed Funds Target Rate. Fed Funds Target Rate. Fed Funds Target Rate. And the blue one is LIBOR. Now I've picked out one month I think. Oh no, one week. One one week LIBOR. One week London Interbank offered rate LIBOR based on US dollar. So US dollar one week LIBOR. Okay, got that. <laughs> so from just give it a quick go from 1982 where the red line and the blue line would have been over 10 percent now it's down to zero actually should i have said actually no i meant to not to confuse anything but the fed funds target rate is now discontinued for obvious reasons investopedia gives two definitions of things when it comes to monetary uh, banking fiscal sort of things this is one of their definitions of target rate remember the red line the red line fed funds target rate description from investopedia the interest rate charged by one depository institution on an overnight sale of balances at the Federal Reserve to another depository institution, as determined by the Federal Open Market Committee of the Federal Reserve. <laughs> and that's a simple definition. Don't worry, I'll explain it. The 12 members who <laughs> compromise, who compromise the Federal Open Market Committee meet for eight regularly scheduled meetings per year. During these meetings, the FOMC reviews economic and financial conditions and determines the federal funds target rate. A decline in the target rate could stimulate economic growth. However, too much economic activity can cause inflation pressures to build. A rise in the rate limits economic growth and helps control inflation pre pressures. However, too great an increase can stall economic growth. The FOMC seeks a target rate that will achieve the maximum rate of economic growth without causing inflation. That's at least what they think they're doing. Right, now, when all the time... Not well, they used to. When the when the interest rate, see these funny things for the people that are only listening to the podcast. I'm waving my fingers in the air. When the people on the mainstream media talk about the interest rate going up and down, like they used to before it was slammed to the floor and left down there, they were talking about the Fed Fed funds target rate, whether they knew it or not. They were talking about the Fed funds target rate it isn't that the fed sets the rate but it is that the fed sets the rate if the fed said says uh, or the mainstream media come on and say the fed has reduced the rate from five percent to four percent what they've done is the F fomc have said we are now going to target the rate of four percent 
4% is the new Fed Funds target rate. So I think a lot of people believe that banks borrow money from the Fed. Yeah, this is I, I imagine this is what people believe. Banks borrow money from the Fed and when the mainstream media come on and say the Fed has reduced the interest rate down from 5% to 4%. That means that banks can now borrow from the Fed at 4% when they used to have to borrow at 5%. I imagine that's what most people think. And it's got... Most things have got some sort of just about catch a bit of the truth. That catches absolutely none of the truth. So anybody out there thinking that is just well wrong. So they're targeting a rate. Or the Fed fund target a rate. Now, let's go on to the next one. Which is the same Investopedia definition of LIBOR. An interest rate at which banks can borrow funds. An interest rate. An interest rate. An interest rate. at which banks can borrow funds in marketable size, big chunky bits, from other banks in the London interbank market. You, if London puts you off, think Wall Street, in the Wall Street interbank market. The LIBOR is fixed on a daily basis by the British Bankers Association. If you don't like that, just imagine some bunch of Wall Street bankers get together and do it. The LIBOR is derived from a filtered average of the world's most creditworthy banks interbank deposit rates for larger loans with maturities between overnight and a full year. Now I chose the one week, didn't I, on that chart. Could have chosen the one month, one year, whatever. Banks lending to each other. Big, um, too big to fail banks around the world. But if that confuses you, just think uh, what rate JP Morgan would lend to City. Yeah, just that. Overnight or for one week in, in my LIBOR case. So have a look at the chart again. I'll put it up again. We've got the Fed Fund's target rate. Now, the Fed Fund's target rate is just, it's not, <laughs> it's not, 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 not what I said it was, not. It's not that banks borrow from the Fed. It's a target rate for Citigroup, Citibank, to lend to JP Morgan, or vice versa, and all other big banks. Keep it in Wall Street, all, all the big banks there. And it so happens that it coincides with what the FOMC have said that their target rate is. Now, this is where it gets confusing, and in my mind, particularly unbelievable. But it doesn't really matter how does how the Fed does it. No, it doesn't silly matter that I think it's unbelievable. This is how the Fed does it, apparently. And I say apparently because I've never come across anybody that's denied that this is the way the Fed does it. But putting together this presentation in my mind before I'm giving it to you, I, I, my, my mind's going, they do what? You know, I've heard this a thousand times, and I've said it quite a few times, but when I was actually getting my brain ready to say it, other parts of my brain was going, they do what? Don't talk bollocks. Okay, this is what the Fed does. This is what the Fed does. All banks, city and JP Morgan bank with the central bank. They don't have bank. They're a bank, but they don't have... See, funds are hypothetical now. They're only digits. So they don't keep the... the, the, the <laughs> City and JP Morgan don't have a vault for their digits. Their vault for their digits is the central bank. The New York Fed, or let's just call it the Fed. Keep it simple. The Fed is the central bank for... Uh, JP Morgan and City. You bank with JP Morgan. JP Morgan banks with the Fed. That's just how it is. Your digits are not kept 
even at JP Morgan. JP Morgan keep your digits at the Fed. And it's all it is is who does the accounting, who does the the changing over, who's got the keyboard that goes. Uh, somebody transfers money from JP Morgan to City. Uh, you've got the appropriate bit of paper. It could be a check from you to your neighbour. You're paying them. They you, you bank with JP Morgan. They bank with City. It could go to the your bank. Your the JP Morgan and City as the, the banks. Then on to the central bank. Then the central bank transfers it over, or it could be City borrowing ten billion from JP Morgan. Uh, the appropriate piece of paper, a check, or however they write it. I don't know how they write it. Fax the Fed. I don't know how they do it. But the the Fed's got the appropriate bit of paper and presses the appropriate buttons, and the digits are transferred at the central bank. It's just who where the computer is more than anything. It's the it's the or the telephone exchange. It's the main telephone exchange. No, let's keep it to the main computer that does the the thinking. So. We've got the chart there still on the on, on the screen, hopefully. The Fed sets its target rate and banks then start lending to each other short term at that target rate. Why? And this is the bit that does my head in. In normal times, which we've learned most of our stuff in abnormal times, but before the crash, Banks would not keep many reserves at the central bank, but they had to keep a certain amount at the central bank. Yeah, yeah, keep going. I'm just thinking, things come to mind that complicate matters. And I'm thinking, no, don't complicate matters. It might not be telling the entire story, but don't complicate matters. So they've got a certain amount of reserves. During the day, and this is a daily thing, they've got to keep their books right at the Fed with the right amount of reserves at the end of the day. But so much money has been piling into JP Morgan and City, and so much has been piling out that they can't keep control of it all, all during the day. But, you know, in the, in the half hour after closing time, they can total everything up and go, Ugh. no, we're short of reserves at the Fed. Now I'm going to breeze over what reserves at the Fed are but one one of them is short the city short JP Morgan's over at the Fed so yeah city was short wasn't it yeah so, so city must have those reserves so it can at a push borrow that money from the Fed but the Fed doesn't want to lend it to the money it says no this is a capitalist system you go and borrow it out there in the real world if you can't borrow it off anybody we will lend it to you, but at a punitive rate, and we'll tell the world, or the world will just get to know, that you've had to come and borrow money off us. So sod off, you go and sort yourself out. So City, get on the phone. They've got you know the offices that people come in at four o'clock in, uh, in the afternoon when everything's, when the bank's closed, and they start their work then, getting the books in order um, at the end of the day. Of course, it doesn't quite work like that. I'm sure people just stay on and do a little bit more. But their job is to borrow from the other people that are staying behind at the other banks who are willing to lend their extra money for a bit of a cut. So, City want to borrow. JP Morgan want to lend. City get on the phone to JP Morgan and see them in the next skyscraper over. So they get on the phone and go, Ooh, yeah, it's me. Want to borrow... 10 billion 10 billion um jp morgan says well uh, and jp morgan wants to get the most for its money um on, on that deal and city wants to pay the least naturally so city will get the actually probably all done on computer anyway people put their offers just like buying s stocks equity they're probably the bid and offer spreads are out there from all the banks and they just choose them but Go with the phone call one. And he goes, well, OK, OK, thanks for your offer, City says to JP Morgan. I'll I'll have a, a stab with Morgan Stanley and still see what they'll lend me some money for. And in the end, one of these banks, let's say JP Morgan, lends some, lend, agree to lend the 10 billion that City need to keep their reserves up for the end of the day. The fax is sent to the central bank saying JP Morgan lends City 10 billion uh, for a week. 
or overnight, it doesn't really matter. The Fed, who people staying late there go, da. okay, and that's it. That's done. Oh, yeah. Then we go on to LIBOR, which is the average rate that all those deals were done at, keeping it in New York. All the banks in New York, all the banks borrowing in dollars in New York, all kind of at the end of the week have to fill a sheet in of what rate that they've lent to everybody now at the end of the day do it this way at the end of the day all of them um the last people before they turn the lights off send this sheet into the fed at all the rates that they've lent to each other so the fed get this libor rate in and say it's 4.1 percent and the Fed knows that their target rate is 4%. So it's slightly higher than their target rate. Now, that is the effective Fed funds rate. That's the, the rate that actually had um, happened in the world, 4.1. That's what the banks had actually lent to each other for. But their target rate, the Fed funds target rate, was 4. Now, I've got to get this right. Hang on. So... The Fed obviously wants to get the interest rate down. Okay, it wants to get the, the 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 LIBOR rate down. So what it wants to do then is the next day when people get in, the next shift come in, they they get the piece of paper that says the LIBOR rate was 0.1 of a percent above the target rate. So they go to um a computer program that tells them well. Uh, on the amount of deals done, we want to get the rate down by 0.1 of a percent. That means that overall, the banks should need 32 billion more of reserves. And our power, past um, reckonings mean that that'll probably bring the rate down. Okay, so what happens during the day is another bank of pe bunch of people at the Fed phoning around JP Morgan. Uh, Morgan Stanley and City saying um, now they want to put more money out there yeah I know you've got treasuries on your books I'll I'll say buy them um, it's not quite right but it's easier to understand we'll buy them off you for this amount of money which is a deal that they can't resist it's not a wild deal but it's a, a deal they can't resist so on the books of the banks a certain amount of treasuries go technically onto the books of the Fed. And the Fed goes and puts some reserves on the books of the banks to the shared out amount of about 32 billion, Nick's hypothetical number. So at the end of the next day, this day, that that's happened, the same thing happens. It might be that JP Morgan are short this time and City are over. But when everybody's phoned round and done all the deals, because they had more money, there was more money available in all the banks, the averages of all the banks, they couldn't strike such sh hard deals because um, we're having it the other way around. Uh, JP Morgan knew that Morgan Stanley had even more money left over. And there were other banks that had more money left over because they've got the more reserves because the Fed had swapped treasuries over, brought treasuries into them and put reserves onto the bank's balance sheets. So there was just more money out there on an sale and demand, um, sale and demand sort of understanding. That was just enough to bring the LIBOR rate, the, the rate that averaged out over that evening, down to nearer 4%. And that's, I think I've finished, yeah. That's what happens. That's how the Fed sets interest rates. That is the Fed setting interest rates. And that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Obviously, you can throw in lots of complications, but that's it. And they'll do that, pulling treasuries in or pushing them out and swapping the money over like this, depending whether the LIBOR rate or the rate of interbank lending, the interbank lending rate is over their target rate or under their target rate. 
and they, they've just got people that are paid to do that. And that's it. Really, when it comes down to it, the Fed doesn't set the interest rate. It says what the rate that they're going to target, and they're going to target it by pulling and pushing um, bits of paper and cash reserves in the banking system to make it happen. And miraculously, and my brain can't understand it, this has worked right up until the, the, the great crash thing. You know, it's worked for... I don't, I don't know if it's hundreds of years. I can go back to the Second World War, but I imagine they've been doing this for hundreds of years. But it doesn't matter if they haven't. They've certainly done it for, since the Second World War that way. But now it's become a bit more difficult. They can't do it that way because so many, there are so many reserves there. We won't go into the technicalities of, of that or the, probably the, um, the trickiness of that. Okay. Right, um, I'll do this one. No, shall I do this one? No, I was going to put something else on the top of it, but I've gone on, on slightly more than I intended to on this. So I won't. I was going to go to Japan because Japan's um, having an interesting time of it at the moment with the government coming and sitting on their, the equivalent of the FOMC um, <coughs> meeting. And will be, there's be a government minister sitting there and the whole independence of the central bank thing is being kicked into touch, which I'm sure that we'll see more and more of. Um, but there's no need to go into that. But I would like to go into that. I might do it tomorrow. So. Any questions? <laughs> As I say, it does my head in. It does my head in completely. I can't. It just seems such a wanky way of doing things that it's just unbelievable but apparently that is the way it's done bye